Hello everyone and welcome to this course on modern application development. So what is CRUD, right? It doesn't sound like a particularly nice name, but it has a very specific meaning and has, and it's an acronym obviously, right? We'll see what it stands for in a moment. It's a very useful way once again of thinking of certain actions that we commonly do, right? And once again, at the end of the day, you know, all of this is the result of distilling out years of experience, right? People find that, okay, these are common operations. It's not that you can just a priori sit and think up of an acronym like this. You realize that whenever you are manipulating data, there are a certain common set of operations that you are doing. And based on that, you say, okay, these are the most common ones. This needs to be implemented no matter what kind of data model I have. Let's try and distill that. So let's try and understand this a bit better, <laughs> right? So as I was mentioning earlier, you know, it, you can take the student grade book as a sort of running example, but I'm going to be talking without referring to a particular example most of the time. One type of operation that we might want to do with any kind of data is to create a new object of that type, right? So create a new entry. Once again, you know, going back to the old example, create a new student in the database. There are certain constraints probably, right? I mean, when I'm creating something new, one of the things must be that it must not already exist. That's pretty clear, right? Now I can actually sort of go into the database and check and make sure that does not happen. In other words, the student does not already exist to avoid any potential conflicts, right? Now it's in the case of students, it's entirely possible that two people have the same name, right? So there has to be some other way of distinguishing and saying, okay, these are actually two different people, right? But at the end of the day, the creation of a new object of any type ultimately should is one of the sort of most basic ideas that we can think of, right? While doing this, you might also want to mention certain fields that are mandatory. Let's say the name is mandatory, right? But address may be mandatory, mobile number may be optional, right? Depends on what you want to do with it, right? So the create operation, in other words, is one of the things which I commonly want to do with data of uh, any type where I'm trying to construct an underlying model. The next thing I would probably want to do is to read Right? Once I have created several entries, I would want to read them, not just read them back one by one, but probably get a list of all the students in the system, right? Maybe do something like summarizing. How many students are there? What's their age distribution? What's their geographic location, right? Which parts of the country are they sort of concentrated in, right? Or once I have more information, I might want to start plotting histograms of marks, right? find out whether there are correlations between how well a person performs in one course versus another course. All of that is basically reading information from the underlying models, right? So we have create and read so far. The next thing might be to update, right? Okay, so a student changes their address, go in and modify it. They change their phone number, update that, right? They, you know, uh, took a supplementary exam and did better in one course, change their marks. I offer a course, but then I realize that I need to you know, delay it by a couple of weeks, change the start date of the course, right? All kinds of information that might need to be updated, right? I need to be able to go into the database and make changes to it. And lastly, I would also want to delete information from the database, right? So maybe a graduated student, I remove them from the database. Usually you would prefer to do something like archiving, right? But there are sort of good reasons to want to delete them from a table. Right? not from the entire database, but at least from a table. One example could be that, you know, when you start hitting very large numbers of students, right, when you're going into the lakhs or millions or crores of students, you get to a point where the database is so large that searching through for a given student becomes a problem. It starts becoming a slow operation, right? So in most of the cases, at least for the live courses, you know that only, let's say, a few lakh students are registered. So the remaining students, you archive them move them to a different table altogether in the database or possibly even to another database and delete them from the existing model. So if I go into the live Swayam offering and try to sort of look up what courses I did, it might even tell me that, look, you are not currently registered for any, right? Simply because it has to do some archiving to keep the system in good shape. So delete, in other words, is one thing that you can think of. The other simpler option is, you know, and simpler possibility is that I made a mistake while entering something. I just want to delete it and create a new entry, right? All of those are reasons why you might want to delete an object. So 
that's where crud comes from right create read update delete okay that's sort of the life cycle of data right in any data model right you first create it then you are reading what has been created you might occasionally make a few updates finally you are done with it you delete it and get rid of it okay now the important thing to keep in mind over here is it was originally defined in the context of databases as such crud has nothing to do with the web okay so please think about that even though you hear crud apis and crud in various different concepts in context crud was not created for the web it was sort of co-opted as a useful way of thinking about what is happening in web applications but the underlying reason why it's there it's more of a data model right the life cycle of a data rather than something fundamentally to do with the web and that sort of shows up in certain ways in what needs to get implemented and so on okay and databases themselves could be optimized in different ways right you might for example have systems that are read heavy right there's a lot of reading but very little writing or creating so there's like let's say a lot of back information about the courses offered on uh, you know the iitm uh, bsc degree or the swayam online and you want to collect statistics about it right lots of reading from the database but not too much new information going in on the other hand let's say that you are just archiving security information right for logs which you need to keep it for the next one year or something like that that would be write heavy you keep writing the information but you are never going to go and look at it unless there was an incident unless there was a problem okay so databases need to be optimized in different ways the crud idea essentially sort of helps you to sort of conceptualize what is happening in different places okay and what is usually done is that in the context of the web at least we take a concept like crud which needs to get implemented and then cast that in the form of an application programming interface or an api right so an api is something important and we'll be talking a little bit more about this as we move further ultimately all that an api is defining is some standard way of communicating with a server in this case right actually speaking an api is not necessarily need not even have anything to do with a server right i could for example define an api which tells me how a certain library right uh, in let's say the c programming language needs to be used okay and all that it says is okay you know this is a library to talk to databases to communicate with databases if you want to use it you can do this you basically make these function calls so that's the programming interface okay that's basically where the original term programming interface came from application programming interface because you are talking about programming the application in such a way that it can talk to certain libraries okay now in the case of the web the same term is used right because it has a very similar kind of functional a similar kind of behavior right what we are doing is we are defining certain ways by which i can uh, implement an api right the only difference is in this case the communication with the api rather than compiling everything into one program one c program which you know then just links again certain libraries in this case the communication is happening over a different protocol altogether okay in a c api what would happen is that you would you know include some header files you would then link against the appropriate libraries and when you run the program the communication between your code and the library is happening through the function calls okay in the case of the web the communication between the client end and the server end right is happening through the http protocol okay that's the main difference ultimately there is always this concept of somebody providing a service somebody requesting use of that service and how do they communicate with each other so the good thing of course with any api is that the client only needs to know the api itself right they don't need to know how the server implemented the functionality for example you know if it's a database i really don't care whether it was done using mysql or postgres or sqlite or you know no sql mongo db something of that sort it doesn't matter as long as i can make a certain request and the server will give me back the information in the format that i want that is what the api specifies the api specifies how you should request data from the server and it also specifies what the response from the server will look like okay 
Now, CRUD is a good set of functions well suited to building a basic API, okay, because very clearly defined, it sort of tells you this is what needs to be done. And around that, you can then say, okay, you know, this is how you can construct an API. You basically tell the user that, look, if you want my server to create an object, you send it a request like this. If you want it to read an object, you will send a request like this and so on, okay. And therefore, CRUD is typically considered the first level API, a very common thing that is used in implementing web applications. And remember, of course, that it deals only with the data model lifecycle, although there are other control aspects possible in general.